Hey guys, it's Sam for Digital Meet again. And in this blog video, we're going to be taking a look at an application called NVIDIA Canvas. Now, some of you will know that in the past, I made a video about a online tech demo uh, called NVIDIA GoGAN. So what NVIDIA have done basically is wrapped up that technology and put it inside a much more polished application. And that's what we're going to be taking a look at today. Okay, so this is the NVIDIA Canvas beta. I will be putting a link to this in the description of this video. Although there are some requirements to using this app, one of which is you must have an RTX card. I've got an RTX 3090, so that's not a problem for me. So let's have a look at the UI quickly. Let's just go over. At the top here, you can see you can make a new document. This is where you can open a file that you've actually saved. So that's something that you can do from within this. You can actually save your segmentation map and the result as I believe it's a .can file. So kind of like a PSD in Photoshop, you can open up .can files in NVIDIA Canvas. Uh, here's the save button, here's the export. So if you want to export this or this or both to a PNG, I think there's another format. I can't quite remember though. Here we have the undo and redo buttons, but they've also got shortcuts. So undo is control Z and uh, redo is control Y. You have this zoom here. So you can see it's on 56%. Let's crank this up to 75, but that also has a shortcut, which I believe is control minus and plus. We've also got this um, switch view, so we can either have the map view. So this is the segmentation map, or we can uh, have both or the image view. I'm going to leave both on for now. Down the left hand side, we have the currently selected materials. We've also got a brush tool, a line tool, a razor, fill tool, a pipette, so material picker. And we've also got this hand, um, which allows us to pan around the screen. So if I grab the hand, it does this. But you can also do that by holding down space. So if I go back to the brush tool and then hold down space and then move around, it will do the same thing. So there's a shortcut there too. Here we have a slider for the brush size. Uh, nice and simple, but we can also do that via shortcut. So that is control in the bracket keys, and you can see it moving up and down independently of where my mouse is. Quickly to go over the right hand side of this, we have our materials, which we can use. And you'll be able to see that compared to my last video talking about NVIDIA GoGAN, there's a lot more materials than there were in that online demo. Uh, styles, we can choose what style this picture is in. If you have a look at the canvas here, you can see that we've got, you know, clouds on a sky. And that's because in our segmentation map, this is just pure, pure blue. And if we go up here, it's actually this material, which is sky. So if we change the style, you can see that we can change the style of uh, what's currently being shown. I like this one, so I'm going to pick this. And under here, you can see that we've got layers now, uh, which you didn't have on the online demo. Um, so now you can layer up your stuff and we'll get into that a little bit more. So that's pretty much everything. So let's uh, get cracking and actually start doing something. So here we've got a C material. I'm going to pick that. I'm going to go over here to my line tool and I'm just going to draw a line somewhere around the center of the image like this and let go. And you can see that this updates um, in real time. On the NVIDIA GoGAN tech demo, there was a button that you had to press to you know, make this update. And this kind of comes into the settings. If we go up to this cog wheel at the top right here, you can see that it says auto paint. When auto paint is enabled, the AI updates the output image after every brush stroke. When disabled, the AI will only update the output image when F5 is pressed. So if I was to turn this off, the only way this would update is to press F5. I'm gonna leave it as it is because I wanted to do it itself. Anyway, so let's get back to this. You can see the change has been made here. I'm going to grab the fill tool and fill in the bottom part of this. So that's all C and you can see that it's updated again. Much better quality than NVIDIA GoGAN. This looks a lot more natural. So let's just keep going and see what we can kind of produce. So this is my first layer. I'm actually going to go back to my brush tool because I'm going to want that in a minute. And I'm going to rename this layer. So if we um, double click on it and let's call this C. And we've got this layer, which is our C layer. I'm going to add a new one and I'm going to call this sand. Press enter. 
And now we're drawing on this new layer and we won't affect the C layer underneath. So let's go and choose our sand. And I'm going to choose a rather large brush. Yeah, you may be thinking, is it just taking pictures that's stored somewhere on a database? Um, and it's not actually, it's creating a whole new picture based on data sets that the AI for this has looked at. And I'm just going to create a new shoreline, just make sure there's a bit more sand going on there. And I'm going to leave it at that, I think. So that's our sand. Let's go over to the add layer again. And we've got new, new layer. I'm going to call this, um, let's call this background mountains. Okay, so we've got background mountains. And I'm actually going to drag this. Um, let's put that back there. Uh, let's drag this to the bottom here. So it's actually behind the sea. So I can't actually paint on top of the sea. In fact, I'll be painting behind it. So what I'm going to do is go up to the mountain material here. Go into this. Oh, this is something else that I should mention. Although you can draw on here, and it's uh, somehow painted in clouds, it looks like a mixture of clouds and a, a mountain there. I'm going to undo that. Even though you can paint on this side, you can also paint on this side now. So I'm going to bring my brush size down a little bit, and I'm just going to paint along the horizon. Uh, you'll also notice the resolution's a lot bigger as well. I can't remember what the resolution was on the Gogan tech demo, but I know it's much larger here. Anyway, so we've got our mountains in the background. Uh, I'm going to add another, another layer, and I'm going to call this clouds. So let's uh, do that, and I'm going to choose these clouds here. Um, and I'm just going to start painting up in the top right hand corner. And you can see my brush here. And this is how this brush stroke is being represented. I'm going to um, increase the size actually to about halfway, something like this. And uh, continue painting. So I want something like this. Nice big ominous cloud. And then maybe I'll do something similar. In fact, let's drag our clouds below our sea and below our mountains because I don't want the clouds to actually paint over the sea. So I'm going to do something like this as well. Lovely. And if I wanted to do something on the horizons, I could without interfering with the um, mountains that I painted earlier. So this layering system is really cool, actually. In fact, you could have something like a storm on the background. You can see that it's affecting the mountains slightly, and I think that's just sort of to do with the way the algorithm works. So let's have a cloud here and let's do something here as well. That'll do, I think. That might be um, a bit overkill actually, but yeah, there we go. All right, let's, um, let's do something else. Let's grab, let's have a look at this stone material. We've got a wall here as well. We've got some trees. So I think I'm gonna create um, maybe some Let's try this stone and let's also make another layer. And I'm going to call this uh, foreground land, something like that. And I'm just going to start, oh, go back, painting rocks jump, jutting out of the sea here. I wonder how well it will do in terms of. Okay, that's not too bad. It doesn't look the most natural, but that's not bad at all. I'm going to undo that because I think we might be able to get a better result from these hills here, this hill material. So let's uh, let's try this. Oh yeah, it's trying to incorporate it into the shoreline, which is a bit of a shame because I'm trying to get it to kind of stick out. Let's try the um, the mountain material. And see how we do with that. That's not bad. That's all right. Okay. That's not bad at all. So I'm gonna. I'm probably gonna stick with that. Color in this bit. In fact, let's do it here. Probably get a better result. Okay, and let's do it the other side as well. 
so we kind of get like a rocky outcrop so it looks like you know there's something going on there and we'll color that in i could just use the fill tool for that couldn't i really okay that's that's looking pretty good um let's get rid of that there we go that's much better and now we could start populating this with maybe some shrubbery and stuff so if i choose the tree trees here it says forest maybe i can start painting some greenery on top of this and you can see that it's adapting and changing as i go about and if i get closer to the edge you can actually see that it's doing that there and maybe let's try that up here as well get some trees on the go Oh, it's having a bit of a confusion moment there. Let's color that in and make sure that's all filled in. You can see it's not perfect. You can kind of see through that stuff there, which is a bit of a shame, but maybe if we paint down further, no, that didn't quite do it. So let's undo. But again, this isn't sampling from pictures. This is artificial intelligence, AI. Um, it was given a, a data set and it's trying to merge these things in in a believable manner. Instead of trees, I'm going to try this, uh, the bush here. And let's uh, give that a go and see what happens. Yeah, that's a bit, there we go. That's a bit better, isn't it? So we've got some bushes on top of that. There we go. We've got, we've got a, we've created a photograph that doesn't actually exist. Uh, let's try maybe putting something down the bottom here. This is meant to be a stone wall. That looks a bit dodgy. Like I said, it's not perfect all the time, but it's a lot, lot better than it was for NVIDIA Gauguin. <clears throat> I'm going to try doing that again, but with this stone. That looks a bit better. A bit more natural. But I think I prefer without. So there you go. That's a good example of NVIDIA Canvas. I think it's a massive improvement on the Gauguin tech demo. Having said that, NVIDIA GoGan 2 is now out, and I'm going to be doing a video about that shortly. So this is an upgrade to the, the original NVIDIA GoGan tech demo. Um, there's more materials. You can actually do more things with it. Not all of those features have been incorporated into NVIDIA Canvas beta. I'm sure they will be in the future, but at present, they're not in there. So I'm going to do a separate video about the NVIDIA GoGan 2 tech demo. And uh, as soon as NVIDIA Canvas gets updated with some of those features, I will do an update video for NVIDIA Canvas as well. I hope you found that interesting. Go take a look at NVIDIA Canvas. The link for it will be in the description of this video, and I'll see you in the next one. If you're watching on YouTube, please like and subscribe. And don't forget to hit that bell to be notified of new tutorials. You can follow me on social media at Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn and Instagram. And make sure to visit me at digitalmeet.uk where you can vote for upcoming tutorials. Thanks for watching. Bye.